everyone a uh, warm welcome to you all on the second session in the webinar series on the theme each for equal promoting women in stem which is being organized by vigyan prasad today we start with the motivation from a very popular quote by valentina kereskova the youngest women to have flown in space that a bird cannot fly with a one wing only human space flight cannot develop any further without the active participation of women with this agenda to mainstream women in stem field we feel extremely privileged to introduce you all to professor sona jharia mel vice chancellor sidho kahnu mo university dumka we extend a warm welcome and heartfelt welcome to you ma'am we also have with us dr nakul parasha director vigyan prasar who has been guiding us through all this in our all endeavors we welcome you sir we also welcome the large group of women scientists researchers science teachers and students and all the people attending this webinar through youtube and india science where it is being broadcasted live for further setting the context of the webinar we have with us dr kinkini das gupta mishra scientist f at gender and digital communication programs of vigyan prasad she has been the torch bearer with the whole process of conducting these webinars but before i invite dr mishra for throwing light upon the concerns of the webinar i would like to remind the audience to mute their mics and switch off their cameras to avoid any disturbances during the session also i would like to encourage the audience to avail this golden opportunity to interact directly with the speaker as well after the talk or they can post their questions and queries related to the talk in the comment section using the hashtag each for equal so i request dr mishra to proceed with the session madam your mic is muted ma'am you have to unmute your mic i'm sorry yeah thank you tusha very good morning to all of you a uh, warm welcome to the webinar series of vigyan prasar titled each for equal uh, in recent times research institutions startups and corporates have recognized the importance of bridging the gender gap to foster diversity in the workforce uh many of them have taken commendable steps to empower women with the right technical skills and provide them with career growth opportunities even the government has also launched and implemented a number of programs and schemes the very recent one is gati which is gender advancement in institutions and vigyan jyoti and many other such programs which uh is being implemented to enhance the women's entry and retention in science education and research but the gender gap still exists in science technology engineering and mathematics and it is the gender diversity however in stem is cultivated by encouraging and mentoring uh, talent for mentoring women such efforts are more fruitful when led by women themselves A female role models play a significant role in inspiring STEM professionals. A research a research study, and recently has also confirmed that female science graduates who were paired with female mentors reported more motivation, more self assuredness, and less anxiety than those who had no mentor or a male uh, mentor. A numerous under representation and negative stereotypes contribute to. uh environment which is uh, not very conducive or uh positive and uh, for women in stem and all the women are graduating with science degrees in increasing numbers these days but this representation reduces or diminishes by the time they reach more senior levels to give women a sense of belonging in stem research and ultimately ensure that world benefits from their contribution from their ideas insights there needs to be pushing of the communities to amplify and encourage the influence of women in stem what perhaps is needed at most is the scientific temperament and scientific attitude to break all the stereotype mindsets in the society to encourage young girls and young women to pursue research and education in science to address this issue vigyan prasad has initiated this webinar series on topics related to bringing in more women in stem education and research under the banner each for equal and this uh, webinar series aim to contribute to the academic and policy debate 
by reviewing the main factors that can be put forward to explain the gender inequalities in the entry level in recruitment, retention, promotion in STEM disciplines, and by providing evidence of scope and results of policies directed to obtain a better gender balance in the sector. It is a great honor and privilege to have with us today Professor Sophia Mins, Vice Chancellor of Sindhu Kanmo University, Charkhand, uh, to deliberate on the topic Innovation and Scientific Temper, Unknown World for Women. On behalf of Vigyan Prasara, we welcome you, ma'am, to the webinar. And I now invite our director, Dr. Nakul Parashar, uh, Vigyan, Director Vigyan Prasar, for his welcome address. Over to you, sir. Thank you. A very good morning to my Professor Sonia Mins, our uh, esteemed uh, chief guest and the keynote speaker today. Ma'am, we are honored, uh, privileged, and we feel very touched, moved, and inspired uh, having uh, known your credentials, the way you worked hard, and you've uh, always throughout your life have stood for equality. Uh, we are honored, privileged, as I said, and remain very thankful to you for having accepted our request and an invitation for this session today. Uh, as Dr. Kinkini Nas Mishra Gupta uh, said, uh, we've been organizing these uh, webinars, these seminars on a regular basis. And the, the purpose of it is just not to you know, complete uh, formality, but to inculcate and uh, empower and to bring in a sense of how important it is in today's world to recognize and bring forth and let people and everyone in this country know about immense opportunities that are available. And uh, we have uh, always, we have always been uh, at the uh, forefront ever since our inception of Vigyan Prasar since 1989 into science communication, popularization, and extension. We've been, uh, we've been always been trying to promote uh, and ensure that the science and technology uh, communication, popularization and extension work that we do also brings in um, all those young uh, scientists, um, uh, girl scientists, um, uh, all those scientists who've been working hard in the labs to come forth and express the work that they have been doing in their labs for the society. It is it's just not that the social, the scientific social responsibility is just a, a, a responsibility of a mere section of the society, but all of us together. And in this process, we've all understood how important it is that science communication, whatever that is done in the labs, does not remain within the lab, but reaches out to the, uh, uh, to the masses in a big way. We've understood, we've been talking about uh, science communication at a larger level, at a larger uh, area. And the reason why I'm talking to you, uh, talking on the subject is to tell that there exist immense uh, job opportunities, immense potential and opportunities for everybody in the society today. And uh, there, there used to be, uh, you know, formal schools where we used to have degrees in science journalism and science communication. But over a period of time, we have seen a great decline. And also we have seen that, you know, products of science communication where uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, news desks available have re receded. In such a scenario, in today's world, when we see a great deal of media that is being uh, run and conquered by our young uh, women scientists, young women media uh, people, it is important that uh, there's a big group of our uh, women folk that can be brought into it and bigger opportunities can be given. For this, the Department of Science and Technology has, uh, has organized a number of uh, programs where we help our scientists understand the nuances of communication so that uh, the hidden author within them can be invoked. So uh, uh, with a lot of such and many more opportunities that we foresee, 
I would uh, you know request all our esteemed audience to uh, you know visit our website and look at to, at various opportunities that we have. We have a dedicated section on gender equality, which is led by Dr. Kinkini Das Gupta Mishra, and I would like to you know sincerely appreciate and laud the efforts that she, as a single uh, as a single person in the whole organization, has been working relentlessly hard for many many years now. This series is a culmination of a brainchild, and uh, we've uh, from for past two episodes that we have seen, we have seen a great deal of enthusiasm and support to these workshops. With uh, Professor Sonia Min's participation today, I am personally delighted and very happy to you know know that our uh, series is now touching heights where we have subject matter experts. Who have from different walks of life are reach, are getting uh, joining us in this whole, and the caravan is getting bigger and bigger. I once again, on behalf of Vigyan Prasad, heartily welcome yeah. Professor Sonia Mintz, and want to thank once again for accepting our uh, request to share today's session. And ma'am, uh, we we would also request, and sorry for sounding selfish. Uh, but we would want your kind presence and blessings to our programs in the future, and we would be very happy to work closely with your university in in this area and many other areas that you would want us to work with. We have a great deal of content that we would like to share with you. We would like to work closely with your university because the area, the domain that you work, not only geographically but academically as well. We, it will be a matter of great. A pleasure for us to uh, coordinate with you, and I'm not only Dr. Uh, Kinkini Das Gupta Mishra, but I myself would, along with her, walk up to you to ensure that we make this collaboration a bigger and better one. So, seeking your blessings and seeking your seeking your guidance on this uh, day today, I take your leave and wish this whole program a great success. Thank you so much, ma'am. Jai Hind. You're muted. Your mic is unmute. muted. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thank you for your kind words, encouraging words. I now invite Professor Sona Jharia Mins, uh, but before that, we'd like to give a brief uh, introduction about her. Uh, we have a woman like Professor Mins, who marks the beginning of the representation of tribals in the important academic position. And her achievement uh, is actually helpful, uh, will be helpful in motivating and boosting the confidence of students from marginalized communities to enter them into the, in the world of research and education in science. She's a mathematician and a professor of computer science at JNU. And she was a, a professor at JNU School of Computer Science and Systems uh, since. Uh, for, for 28 years before taking charge as vice chancellor of Sido Kanu Murmu University. And I'd just like to mention here that besides academic positions, uh, she has never been uh, one to confine herself to purely academic uh, area, uh, academic research or activities. She raised her voice on a host of issues. So when the nation went into the lockdown with the onset of COVID-19, uh, she entered the Twitter sphere for first time not to engage in any intellectual or academic discourse but to help coordinate the safe return of Jharkhand standard migrant women. And she remained on the side only for as long as uh, it took for their return to be streamlined. And uh, in uh, ma'am, I would like to quote um, uh, from one of your interviews, which uh, showed that uh, where you mentioned that uh, your mathematics teacher, like you say that my mathematics teacher once told me not to study mathematics for graduation, Despite knowing well that I was strong into that uh, subject, I made my resolve stronger and I chose mathematics for my higher studies. And so she's one, one uh, who has come off victorious past all the stereotypical, stereotypical mindsets she faced along her journey. And so today, all, the, all the, our audience today would find an inspiring role model to follow and excel in the field of STEM. Thank you, ma'am, for accepting our invitation, for being with us. And over to you, ma'am, for your talk now. 
thank you so much uh, um, uh, in Kanidas Gupta. Uh, so good to uh, see you, uh, Sir uh, Nakul Parashar, and very kind words, uh, part of your uh, opening remarks. And uh, yeah, uh, I would like to greet each and everyone um, participating in this webinar, uh, Johar. That's how we uh, uh, greet in uh, this part of Jharkhand. Uh, I'm wondering if I have the privilege, permission to share my screen so that I can bring my slides up. Um, I think it's not yet come. Else, uh, yeah, I've asked for the permission. Yeah, yeah, I'm giving you. It takes a while, yeah, a few seconds, I guess. <laughs> um, but I, I would like to, I meanwhile, while this logistics uh, is being taken care of. Um, maybe, yeah. You are now the presenter, uh, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah, the presenter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I've not got my PPT part. Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. Let me get the... It's visible, ma'am. We'll be able to see it. Um, yeah, I need to minimize the the other thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess now it is fine. Um, yeah, thank you so much for this invitation. Um, uh, um, to, I would personally like uh, want to place on record the patients of uh, Dr. Kinkini Das Gupta, who, who patiently pursued me uh, to say yes. And then again, I have amidst many uh, things, and uh, I think women keep juggling. One of my friends keeps saying, like, no, women are always super women. You know, no woman is not a superwoman because uh, we keep juggling uh, between number of our uh, responsibilities. And this is actually an optimization problem, which women have we mentioned constantly and consistently overcome. So I think there should be some hardcore mathematicians must uh, take this up as a you know, optimization um, a problem uh, that women manage to solve. Uh, so <laughs> amidst all that, uh, you know, I would like to, as I said, I would like to place on record uh, the patience and perseverance of uh, Dr. Kinkini Das Gupta, who, uh, 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 who, who after her cajoling and et cetera, I was, I, I was, I kept thinking because the invitation came on quite early and I had given my consent also quite some time ago. However, a title or a topic was not dawning in my head. And for want of that, I was unable to, you know, communicate what I could speak on. But a couple of things uh, which were uh, ringing in my head, I thought I could just place uh, here before the participants and the audience, uh, which is probably my um, emotional um, uh, 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 deduction. However, uh, why I'm saying emotional, probably I may not be able to provide adequate data for that because I'm a data scientist. Basically, uh, lately for the last 15 years, I've been doing data crunching. Data mining is an area um, or BI that we hear otherwise in management or computer science. And these days it is big data. And therefore, having done so much of data analytics and then to be able to uh, bring out the, the what the pattern or the knowledge which is there hidden in the data, I think for me now making this presentation is going to be rather an emotional one than a data-driven uh, knowledge, okay? Uh, however, I would like to give it a color. I mean, I need to justify, right, and that, that I'm a part of this series. And uh, I'm sure you have had very illustrious uh, women and a very illustrious persons, uh, achievers, uh, who, who have uh, previously um, delivered these lectures and are going to be also the, the future ones. However, why I chose uh, this title is Innovation and Scientific Temper, an Unknown World of Women. I think my um, abstract. Um, the, or the, the, the underlying uh, principle I have already uh, mentioned, that women 
I mean, as my friend said, women are super women. Why? Because they keep juggling between number of responsibilities and the way they manage to navigate through the, the responsibilities and the way they, uh, they manage to complete their tasks is uh, definitely that, that, that cannot be undermined. Well, right now, I think I have, I have not too many responsibilities since my children have grown uh, up quite a bit. All of Both of them are over 18. And I don't have so much of, uh, I'm not taking up so much of responsibility at home uh, or my kitchen. However, this is the gate of the university where right now I'm um, sitting in the office of the vice chancellor. And it is known as Sidhu Kanu Murmu University, which is in Dumka. I don't know whether it's legible. I hope next time I use a better picture. Um, however, this is in the eastern part of Jharkhand. Those of you who are little geographically aware, uh, the, the, the portion which is adjacent to or touching the borders of uh, West Bengal, a bit of Bihar and a bit of uh, Orissa. So it's actually that eastern part of Jharkhand. Okay. And so there are six districts in which the colleges under this university are or they're affiliated and as well as constituent colleges. And so this is a huge gate and proportionate to the size of the gate, I think is the responsibility to um, administer the, the, the uh, university. And why I uh, will say proportionate to the size of the gate is because, you know, the university is just not a university which gives uh, people job and uh, you know people earn their living. But a university is a place which is supposed to be responsible for the college, the higher education for which the students um, uh, uh, enroll in the colleges and uh, for the master's program in the PG departments and also go on to do research. And if some of you have been following some of the television programs which are education centric, and yesterday one of the channels was again uh, were covering some um, universities and some colleges in one of our states as, and was uh, trying to uh, project the state of the colleges, condition of the colleges, that the the person was not uh, indicating only the structure or the infrastructure which is uh, there, which was fabulous for me to see, but then the student-teacher ratio, so the was was very very bad because the recruitment of teachers has or faculty members has not happened so the similar story goes here also because uh, the, the 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 state of jharkhand is one of the adjacent states from where the story was being carried out and therefore i consider um you know this uh, a great responsibility or big responsibility to be a vice chancellor it is for a short period of three years i'm happy that it is a, a short period for three years in order to take the load however um, um uh, it also gives me opportunity to go back to my research now um as the titles uh, was you know um innovation um um uh, okay if i went back to uh, yeah innovation and scientific temper but then i would like to look at this title from the perspective of women because you see uh, if even if you uh, uh, those of you who are uh, participating if you parallelly or simultaneously uh, open the, the wikipedia um, uh, page for women in science and scientific research the 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 the, the number the data that it would come the hit there is it draws out a long history but not so long history of science okay so it's something like you know, women's participation in science, hardcore science, has been from middle um, uh, age of the history of science. And therefore, the, the world of women, which is sort of not so well studied scientifically and considered for listing innovation, that's where I'm hitting at. And what I consider, if you, if we, if we just look at the definition of innovation, it deals with or it, it uh, presents in terms of 
some something new but what is that something it's the method or idea or product okay um uh, that's uh, that is what innovation is um, in dictionary is defined as or something new okay but i would place like you know, why would one want to do get uh, uh, what why would one want to have a new method why would one want to have a apply a new idea or look for a new idea find a new idea and apply it or why would a person or why would a, a family or why would a collective why would a society want something new uh, i would like to pitch this innovation in the domain of problem or end problem solving okay the problems and problem solving um uh, even in, in each research is uh, problem solving okay basically end of the research we find a solution we find whatever we find is supposed to be innovative huh? and therefore but then if what is done what is the outcome of research and if it doesn't have any correlation or any relation with any problem which may be physical scientific or societal i think that outcome cannot be labeled as an innovation for me as far as my understanding limited understanding of english and therefore limited understanding of the word innovation uh, is it can just remain like a you know nice um, piece to be uh, showcased in the house sometimes you know we do have uh, some very useful stuff such as let's say a soap till uh, uh, till some time ago you know the, we used to get very fancy soaps in what i mean by fancy is a nice uh, fancy shape or some uh, bigger and if that soap remains uh, in a showcase it would not serve its purpose whereas the uh, purpose of the soap is to you know for cleaning and these days i mean covid has taught, taught us taught us how um, clean cleanliness is so important for you know good health and survival so and then having had that if we had a nice so, uh, soap with a, or so, soap with a nice shape and not used it it would not serve its purpose because it was a soap uh, in the end of the day and not the shape in which it was carved out and therefore like you know the innovation has uh, i would like to pitch innovation in the domain of um, problem and problem solving because only then its utility is going to be beneficial because in innovation is in essentially must innovation essentially must um uh must be you must be useful so the innovation is a method that may be useful to in enhance efficiency innovation of an idea would again bring out a better outcome or society now innovation as a product may again enhance the the, the let's say lifestyle or even uh, some task that is at hand or you know the problem that needs to be solved so i'm i was just trying to place the word innovation in its perspective now um so having said that i would like to look at to just delve with the you know, opportunity of women and opportunity of women in the society now in problem solving and women i am i mean some of you if with those those who are women uh, who are listening to me and those who are uh, men also listening to me but must have noticed their women folk in the family you know the way women at least in the home environment the way women do the problem solving is um, i would say is innovation first of all you know the kind of you know i grew up in a very very small town we used uh, firewood we used even charcoal we used all other uh, things up to now we use gas uh, because all these natural fuel are not good for environment as well as uh, uh, you know uh, the natural from the perspective of natural uh, resources um so um so uh, but then over a period of time in my lifetime the way the 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 ovens or chulas were were changed in order to conserve the energy which was the heat okay and to maximize its outcome in order to uh, to also save time cook 
fast and even like you know my mother was an innovative lady i think and therefore you know she had designed um, a, a the chula um, uh, this oven uh, of, uh, in english we will have to call it oven but we basically used uh, firewood in that okay she had made space inside and it had three um, openings to, so that we could cook uh, uh, we used three pans at the same go and then she had this uh, multi size uh, opening so that you know we could place um, uh, in a, uh, uh, pots of different size as well as quantity so um, uh, that is one but you know end of the day what we would do we would empty the entire fire um, and the, 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 even the, the live charcoals and since the it was an earthen oven what we would do is you know we would need the bread uh, for making bread put it in the uh, in the uh it's molds and place it inside cover them well okay and in uh, in an hour we had bread which was done before we went to bed there was bread which was done for breakfast next morning or even we baked cakes that way you know so the thing is what i'm trying to bring is like the the way women think of optimizing which i already mentioned earlier the way women think of optimization our optimization as a problem uh, or the tasks you know the responsibilities and tasks given at hand they are constantly doing this over the way women do problem solving and especially i'm challenging the mathematics women uh, listening to me to uh, to work out a model or this optimization uh, uh, the solution of the optimization problem okay when we could have number of constraints constraints could correspond to the number of tasks that are at hand and then again uh, you know uh, uh, the the other factors about optimization problem but basically the way women deal with their responsibilities towards overcoming them is problem solving completing their task not clumsily mind you they do a perfect job which may or may not be appreciated in, in the end of the day but mind you out of that came an innovative method or an innovative idea or an innovative product okay and so um, you know it is important to also just watch how uh, uh, women do uh, things the problems or the responsibilities that are at hand the way if i am i mean i'm i'm pretty confident like these days the uh, the the courses on design is the one of the most coveted one i um, mean we have come i mean uh, it's uh, related to drawing i think after fine arts we saw an era where architecture was the thing but now design is uh, the buzzword and i think given uh, women to also be part of uh, doing these courses of design i'm sure you know the, um, this area would be so enriched so enriched because the way women think uh, is 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 i'm not saying it is superior or it is different if um, you know uh, uh, the uh, male counterparts are very good with certain types of uh, lines let's say straight lines and playing with straight lines and etc women may not do only straight lines they might use the straight lines and the curves also and uh, things like this but then you know end of the day the question uh, which we are faced with and the, uh, the most glaring question is is the society open for to open all the avenues for women is the society ready to open all avenues for women because society where again predominantly men we live in a predominantly patriarchal society are they yet already are they ready yet to open all the uh, avenues for women are they going to be um, uh, is it are they comfortable with having women as their colleagues or women as their competitors okay um, so i think end of the day our country we have again other complexity of caste society uh, a caste system okay um, uh, besides the gender i think we have the caste is also a reality in our country so therefore the complexity is further more and therefore the problem of my optimization problem uh, these constraints and etc are uh, uh, more than we think of but what is this uh, 
well, how do I want to look at scientific temper? Okay, temper again, the dictionary meaning says either state of mind or degree of hardness or elasticity of iron. Okay, if we look at the dictionary meaning, then the word temper uh, brings out this thing. It is to do with the degree of hardness or elasticity of iron or steel. Okay, and so this, but then if we look at the, the hit the word the scientific temper, I'm sure all of you will, would have been able to do so and you were wondering why I am delving into it. We will come to that shortly. But scientific temper, Again, the, 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 in the definitions of scientific temper, I've seen these three um, phrases which are there in many quotes. I could have brought uh, one quote from, uh, you know, uh, uh, but then since I'm not a trained social scientist and it is very good for social scientists, uh, they, they, they do a lot of reading. Their reading materials are so enormous. And then uh, from their readings, they bring a framework um, and the framework uh, which is excess framework or wise framework and then they position the problem there and try to find the solution it's like you know for me a computer scientist if i have an algorithm of a particular kind such as we talk about greedy algorithm or we call up the dynamic programming methods and uh, a, 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 you know uh, different algorithms so given the kind of algorithm then i but I'm able to get the solution. So, so it's likewise here. In case of scientific uh, temper, um, the, the phrases that are uh, re, uh, commonly found in all uh, scientific temper, uh, besides um, uh, the education and knowledge, it talks about strive for knowledge. Okay. It is a striving for knowledge. Scientific temper would essentially have a strive for knowledge. Scientific temper would always contain, you know, the, the, the freedom and the scope for asking questions or give space for questions. Because unless there is a question, like I said, unless there is a problem, there is not going to be a, an, an innovation. Likewise, unless there is a question, uh, an answer to that question is not going to, um, uh, is, uh, is, is again, okay, not going to be new or old or whatever okay but then the most essential flavor here is the logical reasoning and thinking so logic must be placed so here the largest the large or basic framework is logic even the strive for knowledge need not be that i just see what i see and say if i look out of my window and i see it uh, in the, now after rains we see greenery and we say the world is green I'm sure, like you know, some of you would say, no, no, but our Earth is said to be a blue planet because so much of water. Yeah, but then so, so therefore, you know, um, there, whatever comes out and supposedly an idea, which may be um, an idea which we say is an innovative idea, okay, cannot be so short-sighted and it needs to have that rigor, which we say a scientific rigor, basically in the framework of logical reasoning okay so when we say logical and reasoning then it is uh, something like an if then condition and um, i mean um, in computer science of course we always say uh, have this if then condition it's uh, like you know, unless the pre preconditions are satisfied the action cannot take place so that uh, that's the if if then format or um, a logical conclusion uh, are the, is the another um, uh, framework which I can a uh, formalism not fr formalism I can talk about unless the condition the preconditions are satisfied the then part or consequence consequence cannot be true so for the consequence to be true or action to be initiated the preconditions must satisfy so and so therefore in scientific temper what we need by how how would i as i said in the beginning i may make a presentation today which is an emotional one um, me being a woman me, me having a background of uh, mathematics and science and me uh, having a short experience of few years let's say 40 odd years let's say like roughly 45 years of study and uh, work uh, if I bring in uh, something based on my experience, that's going to be only sample or example of one. 
one, which is of size one. And for any scientific conclusion, it needs to have adequate data. And as I was trying to relate in the beginning that I'm a data scientist where, you know, we need enormous amount of data to finally conclude that something is possible. And these conclusions are not the end in itself because this data-driven conclusions or data-driven knowledge is used mainly for prediction and or, or in interpretations and uh, so but then let us look at um, again women and innovation okay this is the leaky pipe um, uh, uh, illustration which is uh, which is, which again you would find in the wikipedia where women in in, in scientific research or women in science and this was presented by the because based on the unesco science report um, and you, you see um, uh, here, it mentions that uh, 53, uh, uh, th this is the worldwide uh, uh, result, okay, based on the uh, share of women in higher education and uh, uh, research worldwide. Okay, if 53 do undergrad, 53 might do um, also um, uh, um, uh, postgrad. And then only 43 might join PhD. And out of this 43, only 28 would continue to be in research. Okay. Now, I, I'm right now forgetting out of whatever was the sample set and whether they were saying this was the percentage. Okay. Since this was in higher education, I would consider this to be true, the percentage wise, that with 53% were women. In higher education and mind you this is not the data of india or south asia okay but if we consider worldwide in higher education that, let's remember that the unesco would have done this research worldwide and we do have countries where uh, it, you know not everybody goes to higher education but then there are also parts, even in India, let's say the state of Kerala and et cetera, where the literacy rate is very, very high. And let's say Mizoram, where the 100% literacy, when we say literacy is 100%, obviously men and women all are literate there, right? And therefore, in states such as this, you'd see that women in higher education may be more than men in uh, um, uh, higher education in these states. I can also tell you, like, because the, the JNU had such a, um, a, um, a, 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 a positive uh, uh, admission policy, the positively biased admission policy to uh, increase enrollment rate of women, we had a policy which did allow more women to come in. We had certain programs of studies that where women were more, in fact, to the extent, you know, 80% of the class was women and only 20% men, okay? So sometimes it happens like this. So therefore, I would believe that, you know, whenever uh, UNESCO had uh, fetched the data from, um, um, it, it, this is true for uh, um, the study, okay? So this is the scenario worldwide, but if we come to Indian scenario, you and I know the uh, the the, the in, in from the enrollment percentage itself as how what is the percentage of women in higher education? It is it is much more low. And why am I bringing um, uh, the education and research and uh, linking it with uh, the term innovation? Because basically, you know, right now, right now, basically. Innovation is constrained to the research and STEM research out of STEM is uh, uh, science, um, uh, uh, technical education, uh, technical engineering, and mathematics. Okay, you, only to these um, uh, uh, these research. Now, here I would like to pitch two things. One is if uh, something innovative is done outside the research lab, that it's not yet give, it is not given the status of innovation yet if garage if a, a, a mechanical garage car garage okay if a, a, a school drop out very ever fabulous mechanic tries to bring in something innovative 
it's it he he or she will not be able to file a patent because he's done it in their his or her own garage okay unlike we would if we recollect the history of innovations most of the innovations including Steve Jobs or even most of the innovations in other countries have been done in their garage and then when they interacted with people who um, uh, who were good in the field and then that innovation uh, was given um, uh, recognition uh, before it was adopted and so uh, but then the casualty of today and especially indian um, reality is that any innovation innovation outside the research uh, um, lab would not be recognized first of all okay that, that, that is the Hello, am I audible? Hello, no, you are am I? Okay. Yeah, you're audible, man. Continue. Okay, okay, okay. I I had a message of my load uh, uh, signal. Oh, okay, thank you. So, so, so uh, that is one. Um, uh, and two. Um, uh, and and the second aspect is if uh, uh, again this innovation, unless it's a technological uh, innovation, does not have recognition. Whereas I would I would I would I would go ahead and assume that even in social science there can be innovation because by definition the word in innovation also talks about a new method or a new procedure okay and and then one of the definitions would also say a new combination of uh, procedures okay so so therefore the areas of besides the disciplines besides science engineering uh, science technical engineering and mathematics no other discipline is supposed to bring out anything innovative or whatever is done outside these four outside STEM is not considered to be innovation so that's again a concern that I have and again back uh, taking back to uh, education and innovation um this quote says learning and innovation go hand in hand the arrogance of success is to think that what you did yesterday will be sufficient for tomorrow but then i think i will just focus on the first sentence learning and innovation go hand in hand i think learning the word learning needs to also liberated from the uh, demand and the requirement of degree i think it is it a bit uh, of a concern if people uh, uh, hear these words from a vice chancellor saying uh, the you know if the vice chancellor is not serious about giving degrees um, uh, the, to the students and everybody else who should come to the university why would learning be left outside the corridors of uh, the university or college no because i believe uh, you know, uh, the learning starts from uh, the time a child is born and we keep learning as, until our last breath. And therefore, and therefore, you know, finding our shortcuts, finding those tricks to do something better, you, you know, I think except in running these physical races, with races where it is only practice 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 and increasing one's strength to do to run the race better and improving one's own time every other area physically has a scope for innovation because this learning happens everywhere whenever we learn to do because learning is not confined to bookish learning but learning is also learning is definitely knowledge which may be from the books and sources such as that but learning can also be from nature learning can also be uh, 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 the method of learning is learning by doing learning by making mistakes learning uh, from examples and etc etc but then you know learning from um, uh, mistakes by, um, and learning the hard way as it is said 
definitely has a, a scope for innovation to come in because that's where we find a trick to do things. And I'm sure those of you also who love numbers, um, uh, I mean, none of us can be like Shakuntala Devi uh, these days that uh, film is, is on. But then we all have our own tricks on doing the, you know, arithmetic faster. And we keep improving because we keep finding our, our, our own trick. Okay, but can these tricks be labeled as innovation? That's a question. I think these tricks, unless they go through the test of rigor of, you know, facing questions and satisfying all those who have doubt about our trick, and then whether that trick can be put down as a method very methodically, and whether this trick, so-called trick, will go through the test of logical reasoning um, it will not be called innovation, but if it does, I think it has scope for being uh, talked about as innovation. And um, I, I don't want to delve too much into this slide, not because I don't have too much of content, but I think we can hit the Google and find um, uh, in, uh, adequate um, material on, on women in science research. You know, and in, uh, we just need to um, go to the sites, websites of, let's say, Bach, go to the websites of Bach. Until recently, when uh, ISRO's uh, story, success and uh, not so nice stories, but then each story will, is a success story, unless we, uh, until we saw these women scientists in ISRO who had been behind um, uh, these missions, moon missions and etc., you know, we wouldn't have known how many women were there in this room, but there must have been a point in time where there were no women. Slowly, the ability of women to uh, women to be in this room, but pick up the website of TIFR, pick up the websites of any IIT. Okay, and, and then go to department wise, we would see, uh, or any CSIR lab for that matter, pick up any such specialized uh, uh, labs in India, especially. Okay, S science research would have always this lopsided and not gender imbalance, except maybe in biological sciences, because this is what my teacher in school had told me, like biology, you mathematics. Nahi kar okay, but uh, so, so therefore, I, during in, in 80s, in, I grew up, I, uh, okay, 70s, late 70s and early 80s, you would, we would see like there were those who loved science, Women who loved science, they were made to study biology only. And it was said that maths is not women's, uh, um, a women's uh, cup of tea. Whereas I was trying to say that my optimization problem is women's cup of tea only. However, what we see as a profession, we do not see much scope for women in such, uh, such spaces, such labs. Why? I would like to write now also in uh, uh, illustrate a story, not its anecdote, it's a, a true one. I was in a selection committee in a, 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 for a very specialized kind of, uh, um, uh, 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 it was for science, basically for science disciplines. And uh, it was a science panel. And one of the uh, candidates who uh, appeared for the interview, this was a, for a selection uh, science, uh, scientist position, okay? And there was, again, a you know, lady um, um, expert, subject expert in the panel. And we, we all looked at uh, this candidate's uh, CV, CV and we saw that she had consistent publication up to a point of time and then there were gaps. And then again, one staggered paper and then again, another one. She said, Oh, after this time, you have not published anything, was the uh, remark made by uh, one of the panelists, uh, the experts. So she said, uh, so I uh, was married, I had a baby, and so I was taking a break, I took a break, and I was, uh, um, I, I didn't work during that day. And in fact,
uh, the uh, expert who said no but you should have uh, continued to do your research you know th there is so much of pressure on us women also to prove our worth that we also at times um, uh, bring this pressure on other women who may have tried, uh, who genuinely needed uh, uh, that break to raise the children, the ch child, or the baby to a certain age before she got back to uh, her research. Okay. Um, now, that is because, again, uh, uh, is such the responsibility of the family, such as, you know, the childbirth and rearing a. baby is by and large the women's women's responsibility uh, even if we do the uh, distribution of labor in the family this part can uh, is not definitely given to the, the, the male uh, counterparts uh, and then since there is a process we know all the women would understand better there is a process when the body and the mind needs to then prepare to be able to leave the baby for a certain number of hours in order to get back to normal work um, there is a little set setback but let me assure you because this is how this is my personal experience if a person has a bent of mind to do research not necessarily science research the problems keeps banging in the head and irrespective of what the woman is doing you know multiple solutions keep popping up and only when we go, get back to our lab or get back to our work those ideas are again assimilated and in order to see if the research the the, the those ideas can be put through the rigor of scientific research in order to produce as an outcome but the, the thing is like till such time till such time the opportunity to women that's the indian reality okay the opportunity to women is equal which is not same as the um, leaky pipe uh, picture that i showed which was based on the unesco's uh, research but you know unless there is opportunity to for women to to get into this do domain and be equal partners with our male counterparts to be able to uh, you know um, uh, uh, view the same thing observe the, maybe the same experiments and then make our own result uh, how we articulate the result i think uh, it would be um, a, um a, a, uh, a, a, I think it would not be fair to science and science research as well as fair to women who would like to do science research. Do you get me what I'm trying to say? Even to be inter in even to interpret the results, you we require a very open and objective mind. Okay, if the contestation is or if the hypothesis is the the the, the objective objective mind doesn't have a male or a female way of thinking okay i it's our objectivity doesn't have gender sensitive uh, or a gender based um, outcome and therefore it is objective i think i would disagree at that point because to be able to see, see the same outcome there by a male and a female counterpart uh, or to be able to interpret the same results or data we do see sometimes there is a possibility of you know leaving one let's say if um, um most of us have done probably the the chemistry or our physics uh, experiments in school right we may or may not have got always the same uh, the, always the observation which was close to the actual mean okay there may have been deviations and let me uh, assure you and i'm sure this is how it is you know if there was a deviation in uh, one of the observations the women get more bothered about why the deviation took place men would say oh that that was a deviation so truncated okay i may be very biased in my this uh, making this statement but i think it is important to have adequate data as to how women see the same thing uh, or women are able to in interpret the same uh, outcome of experiments as the men do whether 
whether this possibility is not if this possibility is not given or if this experiment is not carried out um uh, uh if this experiment is not carried out intentionally i think it will be um, immature to say that you know women can be better scientists or women women's perspective is uh, is different and therefore this for me and at this juncture a point of time is a question okay um, uh, whether the women's perspective can bring out something much more novel than what already pre exists based on the research and scientific research of men, men because you know the the way um, I, i narrated the story of my mother how she um, uh, you know uh, had this innovative uh, uh, ovens okay but likewise you would have seen we 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 have those of us who grew in smaller towns you would remember that they there were the smokeless chulas okay and the, the, all, uh, why was that it, see somewhere down the line some of these innovative things towards conservation of energy so there was a scientific part and what was that scientific part was the uh, conservation of energy not only from the point of view of earth's resources getting uh, de depleted due to overuse and abuse of the resources but also was uh, towards uh giving more time to the uh, women or those who were engaged in cooking only um so i think it is uh, a couple of things it is important to have that scientific rigor in uh, or scientific temper in making certain conclusions from the observations that may be uh, there however i think it is it is uh, time um uh, the, the innovation in non stem areas was also given um or there's openness to uh, the, to in uh, to invite innovations from non stem areas also because i what i would say uh, go ahead and assume that if innovation is recognized or if innovative ideas and things and products okay methods ideas and products from not a very well established lab and lab condition is also recognized by scientific community and also social science related areas are also um opened up for innovation which need not be always technology based innovation but other innovations okay i think we are where women and those who may not have very high formal education are also uh, allowed to make their contribution i i think in innovation and science research would also will will be uh, it will be possible to take innovation and science research to the next level and so with these words i would like to close at this point by thanking you once again with giving me this opportunity to interact with all the participants it is uh, very peculiar that due to covid we are unable to meet in person and at time uh, some of the software are also uh, they do not allow us to uh, uh, these days not so software it's the connectivity okay doesn't allow us to um, uh, have face time but uh, um, i hope sometime at least uh, we would be able to have some small group meetings also and as uh, dr kinkini and uh, 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 mr parashar were also mentioning if this is the beginning of a conversation with sidhu kanu murmu university between sidhu kanu murmu university and vigyan prasad i i think we'd like to take the our engagement to the next level and to the next level and to the next level uh, because i think i'm here to um, uh, i'm taking up a challenge of bringing uh, the what is been a very um, well preserved system of knowledge in the tribal system of knowledge uh, you know i'm trying to bring some of the aspects through the research and study in uh, the the cultural studies uh, perspective from that perspective so that we'd we'll be able to see some of uh, the things which have been so well preserved for thousands and thousands of years and 
take it through the scientific uh, um, you know the temper of uh, and, and rigor before it can be brought out and uh, be appreciated not as innovation but scientific outcome thank you so much <clears throat> thank you so much ma'am uh, for your lucid talk and how you explain the importance of innovation in research lab and as you've said the learning and innovation go hand in hand method of learning by doing is what Vigyan Prasad promotes to children and students in making them understand uh, the concepts of science through hands-on demonstration and do it activity science kits and uh, you were rightly uh, we are very right in remarking that objectivity doesn't have any gender mindset uh, what is important is to bring in the women's perspective uh, and uh, to so that we can bring out something novel in scientific knowledge uh, thank you so much for your inspirational and motivational thoughts. And with the social intersectionality and a student of science, uh, you are a perfect role model for our young women researchers to follow you and take up STEM subjects as career and professionals. And thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity uh, to collaborate with your university. We will look forward to we'll explore more possibilities of partnering with you. And uh, just would like to mention that Vigyan Prasad has been doing a lot of um, programs, uh, science communication and popularization programs, uh, mostly in the tribal dominated, mainly in the tribal dominated areas. And I've also done a couple of programs to reaching out to the women, uh, both in the school and the college level, and also uh, the women farmers there, uh, the tribal women farmers with the food and nutrition, promoting women in science and uh, agriculture, women in agriculture. Thank you so much, ma'am. We have received uh, some questions. I would like to take some questions and I'll also request Usha to uh, take a few questions. Uh, the, the first question that we have received is from Aishila Mazumdar, IIT Indore. And these questions have been received through our YouTube and uh, other uh, Facebook uh, uh, platforms, social media platform. Uh, how to effectively deal with typical everyday stereotypes about women in STEM? Uh, since being good at what you do does not seem to be enough. <clears throat> um, I, th <laughs> I, I think I would like, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a question I think I must have faced throughout my career in, uh, you know, and I'm sure each of us um, uh, face with, uh, are faced with that in the beginning of our career, and not only beginning, but continue to be faced with it. But let me uh, mention this. Uh, to begin with, there is a male bias uh, from the perspective of uh, male su uh, supremacy which is biased because of the idea of male supremacy, okay? And um, um, uh, that is point number one, which may, which, may, which may bring this pressure. You know, even others who would like to be open to the idea, but then, you know, other male colleagues, because they are majority in number. I'm sure the, 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 the person who has asked this question would testify that she may not be, I mean, there are not women who are in majority in her department. But then, you know, that's point number one, because they are in majority. Two, um, the, the, the other thing is also, you know, as I was talking about, like, you know, women uh, being able to do the optimization, it so happens that we are able to do, but then having said the optimization problem, let me also mention that optimization problem, not unless it is like you know, all the time, the, uh, the problem is uh, written as maximization problem. Um, uh, unless it is solved for, for maximization, it will not give the maximal uh, outcome, but then can also uh, give you no know, optimum. Okay. So, that, that that's uh, another thing but again being a, a student of computer science and also artificial intelligence let me tell you one thing there is a, there is a principle called ocam's razor okay that we practice in ai very uh, proactively ocam's razor says simple is good okay so if i have a very very complicated algorithm versus a simple algorithm i go for the simple algorithm for the reason the simple algorithm gives me an outcome which may be subnormal 
but gives me an answer in in very time efficient manner i don't computationally it's not very uh, it's not very complex so that's and i find women do this all the time the thing is like you not know, they might manage to get the solution they manage to get the solution anyway amidst all their responsibilities uh, with due um, with due apologies uh, to uh, mr parash uh, i think there is always this intriguing thought in, in men so how did this woman get it you know <laughs> I, i'm sure this is what um, uh, you, you know provokes them to have this bias but mind you like you no know, it is simply if we if we if we if we if we try to as i was saying if we look at the percentage of women in biological sciences versus non biological sciences okay in biological sciences go and make this statement the person with the, the the person will be shot down immediately because in biological sciences in bio, biology labs life sciences and biological sciences you have almost same number almost same number it's only in technology in engineering and mathematical sciences that women are in less but very soon when we will catch up with number i think this this question will also uh, you know get shoved away uh, but then let me also my my illustration my anecdote please remember my anecdote it was the lady um, 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 uh, um, uh, panelist uh, uh, in an expert who asked this lady why didn't you uh, even um, uh, produce while you were producing your baby at home you could have done this also no i mean see that's the pressure that we that i'm um, so why i i don't take it against her but i i read it i try to read in between the line probably this lady would have also faced similar questions in the beginning of her career and she was almost near retirement age so almost throughout her career she, she would have faced that and therefore she wanted this lady candidate also to be more in order to prove that women are equally good researchers okay so i think it's it's the number game it's it's a matter of number game and it's the number game uh, which uh, which speaks this way it could be it just could be that the space you see sometimes when the space needs to be shared or share of the pie is to be shared i mean there is a selfishness end of the day which speaks uh, which comes out in one way or the other so so therefore if the person who's asked this question if you are personally as a threat because you do research in the same area that your counterpart is doing i'm sure that must be the reason rather than if you were doing research in a very distinct area and not threatening any of your count male counterparts maybe this uh, this uh, comment wouldn't have come so loudly to you i'm i'm sure i have not answered your question but this is a perpetual thing uh, uh, <laughs> which i feel will end only when the number is a balance the gender balance i'll just connect my thank you ma'am yeah thank you ma'am uh, the uh, uh, would uh, there are some of the uh, panel i mean participants who are there online on who can directly ask question to you so uh, would dr nilita or uh, dr nilima and uh, rita benita roy would you like to directly interact with ma'am hi king kini uh, this is nimita i'm sorry my camera is off because of the bandwidth issue but uh, thank you so much uh, um, to for organizing this uh, event and i congratulate vigyan prasad to take forward this uh, in uh, i mean a very enriching series altogether my work uh, relates to women in stem and i think i am getting to uh, know a lot of a uh, new information new learnings from this particular series uh, so my question as i wrote is more related to institutional mechanisms and policies uh, you know transformation in terms of addressing something related to career breaks particularly for mid career scientists and uh, we have uh, certain policies and schemes but unfortunately we have not really realized a lot of positive outcome of that so maybe if professor mins could uh, elucidate on that point in order to give her thoughts as to how we can address the issue of career breaks uh, for women in stem 
Over to you, Professor Mins. Uh, I'm so sorry. I got disconnected because my laptop laptop went off. Can you briefly repeat your question, please? Sure. Uh, this is related to how can we address the is issue of career breaks for uh, women scientists in STEM, and particularly there are efforts made by DST by other institutions. But however, uh, we haven't really realized a positive outcome of that. So how do we manage it? early career or mid career scientists in that so that would be great if you could share some insights or even if there there are some thoughts in your university or institutions on that line that would be great to know from you over to you professor mens yeah thank you so much for this question i think um, i would like to pitch this uh, in uh, in this way um, or my answer a response in this way I think we've seen uh, the recognition for uh, women's uh, um, uh, women needing uh, the, the 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 break in break, which is official as uh, uh, what do we call it? Maternity maternity leave, right? Um, okay, so we've seen how the uh, space for maternity leave has been made not only in job even in research we see that like you know, for, for um, the upper limit to um, uh, complete phd or submission of phd also um, is uh, is possible to extend if the woman takes uh, maternity leave so now we've uh, the, the 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 gender policy in let's say research and higher education is um, only impacting right now to make space for women to take that break and therefore, I feel now. Therefore, when we try to, um, when we when we uh, try to um, e uh, evaluate the performance of a person, uh, we need to uh, probably see not only how many papers a researcher has published per year, but then, like you know, the the active. Uh, I mean, there needs to be another um, measure or another uh, other um, formula which should be able to in, uh, bring out the person's uh, research productivity differently. Whereas, you know, for example, the I mean, whether you like it or not. Uh, I, I remember, and I thought this comment was a very pertinent one. You know, one of my seniors in um, the JNU, uh, we, we were uh, we engaged in a particular um, administrative uh, responsibility. He said, let madam go. I mean, he was referring to me. He said, let madam go. Whether we uh, agree or not, women have more responsibility at home. So so he let me go and the, uh, their discussion or uh, whatever thing, uh, informal meeting continued. Um, but then um, I was so humbled by the way the senior professor recognized uh, my responsibility as a mother because my children were very small at that time. I, I used to at times bring my children also after school to my this office uh, to, uh, I mean, when I didn't have a babysitter. What I'm trying to uh, um, hit at is i think it require it should uh, also bring in um another formula to evaluate any person's um product research productivity if there are these other elements part of her responsibility individual as an individual okay um and i see i and i feel only now we have seen how the maternity leave from being 45 days for a generation before mine, I was able to avail of three months. Then it turned became uh, you know six months, and now it uh, we have something called childcare leave, which can be of um, a maximum of 720 days. So you see how the, the, the how the workplace is getting friendly for women for their productivity because if the woman is uh, stressed out in workplace will not be able to um, uh, bring uh, uh, have it, uh, her uh, productivity as maximum and therefore making space for such has happened only now recently for us to get the outcome to get the data of the outcome i think it will take a little more while uh, and 
this is a very welcome beginning how the policies have changed and made space for women to take leave or be off uh, from workplace and yet be engaged but i think it will also require us to work out a formula uh, that would be uh, more uh, which will have again uh, you, you know um, a, a reg regression formula which will have a different bias term for women as opposed to different bias term for men you know when we say y is equal to alpha x plus beta <laughs> you know the beta for women could be different from beta for men and in in case because i can't even go ahead and say women who are not mothers or who are not married they have a different beta than the women who, because you see now i i think i should um, uh, openly uh, mention this women definitely in their you, you know um, the the menstrual cycles have such um, um, mental um, impacts which kind of uh, affect their productivity and so therefore we need to probably work towards the research productive uh, a formula for research productivity of women um, which would actually bring out or you know let's say have the best paper if i if i say my best paper versus another person's best paper or best three papers versus the other person's best three papers or should it be like you no know, in my uh, 28 years of uh, career or let's say active years of uh, um, uh, roughly uh, you know 16 17 uh, years how many papers have i turned it should not be based on that it should be based on the best based on the best or based on some other formula uh, this is only my very <laughs> thought um, but then if i'm if i'm seated to judge probably i'll do it this way no thank you thank you professor mens this was helpful because we also keep on debating on professional age versus biological age in these kind of debates and also as you mentioned about productivity and uh, how we bring in the element of gender thank you for that answer thank you thank you nimita thank you uh, is there anyone else from the uh, from this uh, platform who would like to ask directly a question to ma'am others i'll take uh, there are many ma'am we have received uh, more than 20 questions but uh, it would not be possible for uh, to take all of them but i'll take a uh, few two two more at least and tusha has also another set of questions so she'll also ask you uh, so sure. uh, good uh, nilima ma'am uh, nilima jerath and i see another lady uh, would, would you like to ask directly some interact with uh, ma'am professor mills Okay, I'll just take another question. This is from Dr. Anurekha Sharma, Kurukshetra University. What steps do you think are absolutely necessary at university level to ensure increased participation for women in STEM? Over to Professor Mins. What, what? Can you please repeat the question? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll repeat. Uh, what steps do you think are absolutely necessary at university level to ensure increased participation for women in STEM? she's from kurukshetra university first of all allowing them to have a very good uh, a good school education where they are they are they're leaning uh, with their leaning towards stem is and uh, i think this would also require some innovative um, interventions in education and school education Uh, in uh, uh, which are related to uh, subjects related to stem so that children are not only uh, you know for example mathematics should not come as a burden to children but it should if it it becomes like a joy for children you know so so i think uh, the problem the, the mental block or the joy element comes in at school so if at school when they start appreciating those subjects i think that is where the uh, problem needs to be addressed because i to me that seems like a bottleneck if that bottleneck is taken away then we would have more women who would complete school with science and then there will be more women who would enroll in college with re, in subjects related to stem and so there'll be more uh, women who'd come to research and uh, you know uh, in stem 
so i feel the school is the bottleneck fine thank you ma'am uh, there's another question uh, oh neelima ma'am would you like to join me yeah let me interact with ma'am yes mr yes. fun First of all, apologies that I could not join at the very first place. I joined a bit late. We were in the middle of a meeting, so I had to wait till the time the meeting was over. But that's it. Was a wonderful talk, Doctor Mins, and I really enjoyed it thoroughly. What you are have said for research also holds true for a lot of administrative jobs where women are. taking up administration or even in science communication because i am in science communication i find that the issues are always the same all the time the glass ceilings are there but yes um and yes i do agree when you say that things are changing when i was working when i was rearing my children i know that i got only 40 days maternity leave for both my children and later on the extent of leave increased and i am very happy that it is happening but at the same time there are still many organizations where the 6 month or the 3 month period is still not being followed so i think we need to create more awareness amongst those people because this is being followed usually in the government but not in many other sectors but at the same time uh, i would say that uh, yes as women we have many other responsibilities and we are required to make a balance sometimes i feel that working women always carry a kind of a guilt between them in their minds that probably they are not attending to their family as much but if we really look around i also feel that it's working women who in an effort to overcome their guilt perhaps do much more than many other women would do so i think that is something which needs to be taken cognizance of being sensitive to this itself is very important but at the same time um if i am in research or if i am in administration or if i am in any kind of job i would really um wish to not take any liberties for being a woman uh i mean my responsibilities are the same the time which i have to give is the same i should just learn how to manage my time and how to balance my responsibilities between family and uh, my work at the same time one important thing which i very strongly feel at this point of my life is that as mothers we need to teach our sons much more to respect the work which women are doing and when we do because these are the bo our boys will only grow up to be men who are working in many departments and if we give instill the right amount of uh, sensitivity in them i think um, our successors uh, the women who come after us would be in a much comfortable position so i think as women uh, i would say it is a very important responsibility of all working women to make sure that the family helps them in their homes at least i do that and to make sure that our children imbibe these uh, values in them so that when their wives are working or when they are working with other women they respect the biological requirements of uh i am sure that it is always uh, the time when you are building your career is also the time when you are rearing your family um mm -hmm. so it's perfectly fine it's uh, it's perfectly fine we can do that we, we many of us have proved you have proved it so many of us have proved it so i think it's okay The, but the important thing is that yes we need to sensitize our men much more than what we are doing thank you thank you ma'am uh, professor means would like to add any uh, point to this yes yeah. uh, yeah. yeah. 
Thank you very much, Ms. Gareth, uh, for uh, make point, making that point. I think um, I left uh, the uh, human side of a woman <laughs> in my presentation, and I was only looking at the career path of a woman. Yes, that's very, very important uh, uh, um, that you mentioned. And I, I think um, because unless we do uh, uh, what you said, you know, we would not ensure the generation would, that will be our children's children, you know, and so we need to invest in that. So a couple of things that I experimented with my in my family, I never bought a gun for my son and never bought a doll for my daughter. Okay, so they had those common uh, toys. That was one. Both of them learned, my son learned how to roll rotis before my daughter did. <laughs> right now, my son is staying all by himself in my quarter in uh, JNU. And he, he cooks uh, his meals and then, um, you know, he's feeding himself and keeping. Uh, but then one, one thing which I consciously did uh, while uh, in, in line with what uh, Ms. Jairath mentioned, you know, when my children were growing up um, even before or when my son was of the age I knew his classmate girls would get their periods I explained to him the process and why it happens so that he also knows what happens to women and some so therefore besides uh, you know I, I think not besides part of making them sensitive and uh, respect women are, I, I think we need to also educate them about the 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 the, the woman what makes a woman a woman and how is a woman biological different and the, yeah the biological side of women so that they they, they don't they don't uh, you know from the peer they don't get all information and also google baba these days but then i mean right from the mother if they get the true information i think it's important uh, in this is one experiment i've done with the, my in my family and i i only hope that uh, i keep telling him you know if he can have n number of friends and girls as his friends but if he does, does wrong to a woman he 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 better know that i'm going to stand with the woman or with the girl not with him so i mean some of um, uh, some of these things i think as mothers uh, uh, we need to do and probably we do it based on what our environment allows and so i think we women have always stood up to the challenge <laughs> and we when we realize that it is our responsibility to raise sensitive men to be sensible citizens tomorrow i think we've already done the beginning and you've just uh, completed the gap i left um, that the human side or the of a uh, woman in uh, uh, science and innovation. Yes, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Last question, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, ma yeah, ma I'll take the last question. Uh, coming uh, back to the uh, STEM and technology. Uh, this is from Bindu Sahadev. She's an educational consultant. She says that uh, can robotics or AI uh, be integrated in STEM and also in art skills? And uh, what is your uh, take on that? I mean, what's your viewpoints on this? How that can be done? Um, yeah, having been, uh, having studied and taught uh, AI, but I've not done robotics so much, but it is an application of a uh, artificial intelligence. Um, there are so many uh, things which are mechanical. Uh, which for let's say to to increase the productivity and also sometimes like situations such as you know now let's say if during covid we needed uh, uh, you see um, some kind of delivery or some kind of service uh, for that i think robotics um, and, uh, uh, to have robotics assist so robotics or robots be for assisting as assisting aids in, uh, in you know in order to enhance our living conditions or even at disaster uh, relief um, uh, situation and also uh, you know from for rescue operations and etc um, i am for that kind of technology uh, wherever it it uh, where a robot would do what human cannot do 
because see, we we also had an um, uh, accident in Maruti um, uh, factory uh, to my recollection way back in 2017 or so because there are some robotic uh, components also there and a worker got um, uh, killed because of the ro uh, robotic um, uh, i mean you know, uh, process chain um, a person fell somewhere and the, the, this uh, the, the, the worker fell there or his hand yeah, head or something came in on the way of the robo's action okay now prior to robo's it was the humans who did that same thing and had it been humans pro uh, probably this accident would haven't have taken place because uh, at that juncture or the robo there didn't have the perception the eye perception thing and it was doing things mechanically okay so the accident could have been prevented if a human was there but the since the robo was there uh, therefore the productivity the yield of uh, maruti had been in, increased and with the kind of precision that is required okay so there are these advantages and limitations both of um, uh, you know artificial intelligence ai and robotics but then so it should be deployed very responsibly and it should be deployed only for the purposes that we know is where humans cannot do better okay uh, or it is dangerous uh, what i mean by better is in terms of precision but and again we cannot do better because like you no know, in flood conditions if uh, something has to be retrieved from under the water or you know in fire condition if something has to uh, some body has to be taken out we've seen the, that film right <laughs> also so i think wherever he, there is a limitation for human then if the ro robot uh, robots are used um uh, 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 that's fine with me but then it should be to assist so it should, let it be part of assistive technology it cannot compete because we would not uh, reach that uh, kind of uh, ai uh, machine learning uh, until uh, yeah but if it is uh, uh, if it is yearned for i'm sure we can but machine has its limitation yes Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, we'll not. This is our last question, and uh, we'll now wind up this session. Thank you so much for being with us and for such an, uh, you know, wonderful uh, talk that you've given, and uh, it, it is really motivating and inspiring. Uh, this is not the end of our uh, this thing. We are going to begin the association and the journey together, and there will be many more opportunities. And we would like to invite you in all many of our other programs. Thank you so much. Thank you all the participants who are here on this platform and as well as on our other social media platform. And we we'll like we will be sending you the link uh, and we'll upload it on our website because uh, this has been live telecast also. So thank you so much and thank you for your valuable time and uh, patience. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye.